Oh, I'm headed on Interstate 94. We're just entering Mandan, North Dakota right now. And we're, we'll wander around in Bismarck a little bit, not Mandan so much. I dropped off some recycling and stopped at, what was it, Office Max or Staples or something. Picked up a few things for my class that I was taking in Fargo. And then we'll head out the other side of Fargo. So, as you saw from the title screen, this video is about reading on screens versus paper, which I think is a good match to my uh, earlier video on with, uh, taking notes on a computer versus on paper. This is a good time for me to record a video where you can't see me because it's going to be hot this afternoon. So I was out working in the garden this morning. I came in for a little bit of a break and... Uh, so I thought I'd start on this, and uh, you really don't want to see me on film right now. Uh, and I did buy, I hate to admit it, but I finally bought uh, an air conditioner. Just a, a, it's a portable one, keeps my living room comfortable. Uh, I've found it's made me a lot more lively. So I, I think that's all to the good, but I feel bad about, you know, weakening after 42 years and buying one. But I can't record audio while that thing's running either. So this seems like a good time. So let me tell you about a problem I have. I have a book problem. Uh, yeah, I have a fountain pen problem too, but they don't take up as much space. Uh, the book problem is that my books have outgrown my bookshelves again. I did have a Kindle. It died. But it was one of the older ones. Not the originals, you know, as a like their last or second to last generation that had the keyboard. And uh, I liked reading on that. I still use my iPad with uh, the Kindle app on it. I, part of me would like another Kindle. Part of me says, oh, but you can read it on the iPad. And I don't know, I'm torn on that. I like the Kindle for fiction. You know, we're still speaking personally. We're not into anything that's footnoted yet. I... Uh, prefer honestly to read in a book but what i was really appreciating about the kindle was it doesn't take up as much space i uh, shudder to think how much larger my book collection would be if it weren't for that kindle uh, the kindle is less good for and same with the ipad honestly for reference books and it's no good when you have a multiple book project where you need to have several books open to pool information like some of the electronic stuff I'm working on for school right now. But now, uh, one of the things I liked with the Kindle is I could just read. iPad, every time I get an email, has to interrupt and tell me you have an email. Even if the email, email pro program turned off. If something comes up at work, the principal decides to put something on the calendar, I get a notification. So I'm get, constantly getting notifications, which is an annoying aspect of reading on the Kindle. Also, I just don't like reading on that screen nearly as well. I did not find a whole lot of information about the Kindle versus iPad. I, I, I'll throw some in at the very end, but it's not what I would consider very conclusive or scientific. And you know, we're just going to have to set aside the distraction aspect. I think that's an obvious one for electronic reading. I uh, and, and I'm not saying that, oh, I have a notification. I better go check my email. I am not saying that at all because I'm pretty good about that. It's just the annoyance that you're reading and then, boop, you have a comment on your YouTube video. Well, I know. I check comments about once a day, sometimes twice a day. I don't need to know. Um... Anyway, I, I do like e-ink a lot. I'm so, so, so tempted to get another Kindle just because of that. I like reading from it. Not, like I said, as well as paper, but I'm compromising. Uh, but part of me is waiting for the color version. But then part of me says, well, that just totally contradicts what you just got through saying. So, I don't know. But overall, I, this, this is going to be about tree books versus reading on a screen. One thing I was hoping, or expecting at least, is that it would be as black and white as the note-taking video was. You know, it pretty much conclusively showed that handwriting your notes is more effective than typing them on a computer. This wasn't as clear as that, and you're going to hear that in my voice, and you're going to hear that in my sources and in my wishy-washiness. 
I think there is an edge to paper, but there are definitely some benefits to screens too, which I didn't expect to find. But I have to go where the research leads me, not where my feelings lead me. So bias out of the way, I was hoping paper would win this contest. So what screens are good for are certain types of reading. They're very good for browsing, sorry, browsing and scanning. They're good for when you're looking for keywords. You know, just try doing a keyword search in a book. And I know the English teachers out there are going, it's called an index. I know. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot faster to get to it when you can just type it and the book goes to it. It's I like it personally for one-time reading. Like a magazine. I subscribe to The Economist as an example. I uh, read that once and then that's it. Once in a while, I may want to refer back to an article. Not very often, but once in a while. And you know what? Through my electronic subscription, I can. But the nice thing is, I am not trying to recycle stacks of magazines anymore like I used to. Which you're about to see is a lot more difficult now anyway. It's uh, really good for non-linear type reading. Or... When you're just really being really selective with what you're reading in limited attention span. By the way, crossing the Missouri River here, uh, I feel a little guilty being in the lane I'm in, but I've found when I get further into Bismarck, sometimes it's hard to switch into the lane I want to be in. So, yeah. Right here, there's kind of a nice neighborhood to the right. You can't see any of it. And then to the left, somewhere back there is the Bismarck Zoo. I was reading a, one of the studies on uh, e-textbooks where they ha studied 392 psychology students and about half of them got to use an e-text and half of them got to use a paper text. One of the things that they found, and I was surprised, like I said, I came into this with some of my own biases, they, they got the same overall course grades. Now, this did confirm my bias a little bit. The students reading electronically did spend less time reading overall. They spent less time prepping for class. Uh, they also said they didn't like the text, the majority of them, compared to, you know, same text, just paper version. A lot more of the paper version people were fine with it. And a lot of the students who had used an e-text previously chose paper. I'll circle around to that a little bit later, uh, but one question that immediately came to my mind, despite my biases, well, is that because of their generation? Are younger kids who are growing up with screens more likely to pr prefer the electronic? I, that's where some of the gray comes in. So I'll circle back to that in a bit. I've got a video of a one-year-old girl using an iPad. Now, uh, the reality, no matter what your personal preferences are, is that you do need to learn to read both. Uh, these videos, just because of my limited resources where I live, tend to lean more toward the electronic resources. Uh, it's just the fact of life. The internet has a lot of information. And one of the skills, by the way, that is not in this video, or sorry, isn't a topic of this video, but should be brought up is... With this wide variety of sources available, you have to know how to evaluate them and know, for example, that, oh, Answers in Genesis isn't a reliable source on, on uh, evolution. But anyway, students need to learn to read both. It's just a reality. Now, uh, this particular source mentioned that students actually recall information more quickly when it's read from paper than from screen. But, Let's add a little nuance to this to make it so it's not black and white. Let's make it a little more gray. When they read from a screen, they were better at recalling details. Now, when they read from paper, they were a lot better at the abstract concepts. So one of the things that came to my mind is maybe you need to do both when you learn something. And... Uh, 
Yeah, so do we provide paper textbooks and electronic textbooks? You know, I, I know it's a lot easier for kids to haul home an electronic textbook than it is a whole bunch of paper textbooks. You know, I remember my days of heavy backpacks. Um, another study said that e-text actually causes greater effective learning. Effective, I emphasize the A in it. That would be like your emotion and feeling, which that surprised me, especially in light of some of the other things I'm going to bring up a bit later. You know, that reading stories, you have more empathetic when it's on paper. So I don't know. And then psychomotor learning was also better on an e-text. And I think that actually doesn't surprise me. With uh, a linear... Okay, start that over. The, there was another study that was more the age group I work with. These were 10th graders. And they were given linear texts of 1,400 to 2,000 words. And they are tested on their recall either on screen or paper. And overall, they performed far better on paper. So... Uh, in some ways, that kind of backs up what I'm saying but from the other sources. But again, in some ways, it contradicts. It's uh, gray. I liked that study about the nuance about details versus abstract concepts. As far as I could see, this source didn't get into that. Now, one of the studies that was really interesting was the study on junk mail. Uh, they, they studied paper junk mail versus electronic junk mail. Uh, of course, the goal behind any junk mail is advertisement. Buy our product. By the way, where I'm pulling in here, this is cash-wise food, but uh, it's not product placement. What I was really doing here is I had a whole trunk full of newspapers to recycle, and that green bin there is where they recycle them. Now, there used to be a whole bunch of green bins with all kinds of different recycling. Now they're down to just newspaper, which is sad. But when I opened it up, I could see why. Because it wasn't full of newspaper. Yes, there were a lot of newspapers in there. There were magazines. Uh, there were styrofoam cups. There was a chair. There was food items. You know, so it made me wonder how much this newspaper can actually be recycled. And that also made it really clear this is why they can't recycle. They can't have it out in the open like that because people are idiots and won't put what they're supposed to put in the bin. Sorry to get a little harsh there. But I was not pleased about that. And here I am. I've been stockpiling them in my entryway. Makes me look like a hoarder. And I finally get rid of them and whoa... Looks like I won't be able to do that much longer if this keeps up. Now, I will say, in defense of one of my local businesses, our local Shopco, which is a, <laughs> a low-end Walmart, they do recycle plastic bags. Now, I usually use reusable bags, but you still get those plastic bags. So, I have kudos to them on that. I wish somebody local would do newspaper. Just between those two things, I'd be in good shape. Uh, I don't really drink anything out of a can so I won't have aluminum cans to recycle I don't uh, you know some things are really hard to recycle like the the bag that my coffee comes in I don't know how you recycle that and you know you, you get your frozen vegetables in bags usually those are kind of hard to recycle but uh, overall if I could just recycle newspaper and probably glass well, I guess some plastic too. Plastic containers and such. Styrofoam, if that was possible. Then I'd be in better shape. Okay, anyway. So yeah, I pulled into the parking lot here because I grabbed a sandwich where it says Deli Bakery. And I went over to, there's an office max there. I picked up some office supplies. Well, anyway, back, to, back on topic here. <laughs> uh, so the study on junk mail. The goal, of course, is advertisement. Now, we all know... Because you, you, we all get it. Although my volume is really de... Oh. I apparently edited out a small section of me being in the parking lot. Um, I, we all hate getting that junk mail. At the same time, it's, it's kind of depressing when you open up your post office box and there's nothing there. And you're just like, oh, nobody loves me today. Um, 
We also hate those email, junk emails that we get. Uh, a lot of them I delete without reading. Uh, a lot of junk mail I throw away without reading. There's something else that could probably be recycled. But uh, what they have found, getting on topic again, direct mail, it's about 21% less cognitive load to process than digital mail. What that means is it ends up being easier to remember, which seemed counterintuitive with my note-taking video last week, or two weeks ago, but it makes some kind of sense to me, too, because if I'm not working as hard, I'm more likely to remember it, I guess. Uh, but they also found digital format keeps your attention a lot longer. See, I just had a pop-up of an email here on this computer, too. Doggone it. I, I really need to figure out how to disable pop-ups. Because uh, I don't need to know when I get an email. I'll read it when I read it. Probably this evening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm showing you a distraction, aren't I? Squirrel! So, uh, but... Anyway, the digital keeps your attention longer. Now, what happens is paper actually activates the verbal striatum in the brain much more than digital. This is the part of the brain that's most linked with advertising effectiveness. Well, I guess that's your goal, right? Um, your physical media is a lot more real to the brain, so when I'm reading a piece of paper, my brain is more likely to interpret it as a real object than if I'm reading it on a screen. And so your brain is going to process things that are real much more emotionally and it's going to respond better. Uh, I would say, I'm going off script here again, that may have something to do with why when you're online you can get these nasty trolling comments from people who in person are perfectly nice. You know, I've got, I'm in North Dakota, so I've got, I'm surrounded by right-wing people. I've got a few of them that are so sweet in person and then can put such nasty, bigoted memes on Facebook. And they don't even see it. You know, one that works in the school put one up about firing teachers for political indoctrination. I asked, well, how do you define that? And, yeah, okay, sorry. Off topic. But anyway, sweet lady. But once she's online, it's like her brain doesn't see it as real and doesn't think it through. Anyway, I had to take a small break there. I have soaker hose going in the garden and I needed to switch it, but it turns out it hasn't been running long enough because, silly me, I paid attention to nothing when I turned it on. <laughs> it's not so, the ground isn't wet enough yet, so that's how I know it hasn't been running long enough. Uh, when I switch it to the other one, I'll pay attention to the time. Okay, so where was I? I was somewhere, wasn't I? So there was this, uh, Anyway, so paper is more real to the brain. The brain interprets the information on paper as more real than it does anything virtual. Which may be something scary about my pen reviews. Maybe nobody cares because they're all virtual and the brain's like, oh, that's not real. I don't know. Now, I read another study. Of, it was Kindle versus paper reading. And in this study, it turned out that the Kindle readers were significantly, in quotes, because I quoted this, didn't paraphrase here, significantly worse than paperback readers at recalling specific events in mystery stories. And I have to say that's true. I uh, have been buying a lot of fiction lately with my Kindle app rather than with... Uh, rather than as a book, you know, I'm thinking specifically of the Expanse stories. Uh, and I'm really losing detail. Like, I don't recall a lot of detail. And I've wondered, well, is it you just not paying attention or what? When I read this, it made sense. So I may actually turn toward buying more fiction in paper again. Who knows? Uh, but, um... The, the study was run by an Anne Mongen of Norway Stavanger University. She found, first of all, paper readers tend to have higher levels of empathy. That's understanding and able to put yourself in the place of the characters in the story. Um, transportation and immersion, which means actually feeling like you're in the story, you know, actually part of the story in a way. 
uh, that that's where you lose yourself in a book, I think, is what I would call it in my non-English educated way. Uh, narrative coherence. You know, they, they, they can follow the narrative a lot better. And I know I was reading a book recently. It's a part of a fantasy series, uh, Neil Hancock's Circle of Light. I'd read it as a kid, and it turns out that there's a lot more prequels to it because the first four books that he wrote were actually the last four in the series. Uh, so I read the first one, and it was kind of interesting because I mentioned about I want to go into doing some videos on religion, and Buddhism was one I'd brought up. In fact, one viewer really helped me out and sent me some books on Buddhism. Like, oh, more books. Hey, and they're paper, so that'll help. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, yeah, I just was realizing, because I read it after I'd started doing this research, how much my brain just kind of slips over the words on the page and doesn't pay attention to them. And I don't have that problem with a paper book. I'm, uh, oh, where is it? I can't remember the title. I just started reading a paper book, and now I don't see it. I probably put it away. It's probably in the bedroom. Anyway, so, yeah, obviously I don't remember the title, but I'm finding it, yeah, I don't s just slip over words as much. Now, admittedly, part of what was going on with that Circle Light book was, it was really hard to pay attention to. There, I said it. <laughs> um, another thing she did is she tested students about the books. Uh, she found they had similar test performance except plot reconstruction. And the reason what she thinks is lack of physical pages to sequence events. That physical act of turning a page, which if I'm in a good book, I don't even know I'm doing it. I just turn pages and, oh, Time passed. And, uh, it's still bothering me that I can't remember the title of that book. I'm almost tempted to press stop and go, I'm going to press stop. The Wind Up Girl, Paolo Bacigalupi. All right, now I feel better. All right, so, anyway, when you, when you read on paper, you have these two stacks of pages as a visual cue of where you're at. You do have that muscle memory of turning a page. Now, yes. On my iPad, I swipe to turn a page. On my, so you, it's just not one continuous scroll. On my Kindle, when it was still working, I had to press a button to turn a page. But you don't have that visual cue and not as much motor to it, I guess. Um, just that whole change in the size of those two stacks of pages tells you where in the book you're at and where something happened. Uh, what she is now working on are uh, the types of works best suited to each format, which I think is worthy research. Uh, I'll give you some of my own opinions at the end. There are some advantages to electronic. Now, I alluded earlier to a video about a one-year-old girl, and this was put out by another researcher. I think it's his daughter, but I won't swear to it. It's not a detail I wrote down in my notes. But a one-year-old girl is using an iPad and she's perfectly happy with it. She's moving icons. She's doing, you know, whatever it is you do on an iPad. But then he shows her with a magazine and she's trying to shrink and grow pictures or whatever. You know, she's squeezing it, rubbing it and things. And the way he says it is that she thinks that the magazine is an iPad that doesn't work. But have we actually been preloaded to think that? You know, I, I just want you to think about a normal one-year-old kid. What do they do? They grab things, they squeeze them, they pinch them. That's them learning to interact with their environment. So is it necessarily the fact that it's a magazine that she's confused? So the research there wasn't settled. Now the other interesting thing that came out of that source, before 1992... Studies show when you read on a screen, it's slower, it's less accurate, you're less comprehensive. Studies since then have been a lot more mixed. So I'm going to butt in with my opinion again. I remember the computers at school, our Apple IIe, our TRS-80s. They had black screen, green text, or some of them had black screen, blue text. 
if when now when I went home to my TI-99 4A, I had 16 colors, but I could only fit 40 characters across the screen, which made the word processor on it very interesting. But very low quality, low resolution and so on. Screens started to get better. When I went to college, I well, we were the first one-to-one -one laptop group at my college. We all got a Compact Contura. Four megabytes of RAM. There was 130 megabytes on the hard drive. 256 colors. I mean, it was like heaven. Much better screen, but still put that next to this machine that I'm recording this video on right now. Not, not even close. So I think part of it is the time when the, as the screens improved, that's my hypothesis. I don't know that, but that's what I'm thinking. But what we are finding right now is that eBooks are 15 to 20% of all book sales. Uh, screens have improved, especially e-ink, which was not a thing back then. I like e-ink a lot. Now, again, I like the paper book better. But if I'm reading in the evening before I go to bed, I liked using the Kindle for that. Um, I didn't need a light on. Uh, well, I guess I had a little clip on light that went into the case on the iPad. But, you know, I didn't need all that to read. I, I, I could just read mostly with just a light on the screen and have it darken the room and kind of go to sleep. The eye reading on the iPad just doesn't work that way, and I don't in the evening um there's not a whole lot of tactile experience i think i mentioned that before the page turning the page stacks navigating along text as some of the other studies have said the brain sees paper as a physical object it does not see a screen that way so you read with a different mindset and when you're reading a book just think about this like this notebook that i'm reading well i'm kind of talking off my notes i have several pieces of information to give me a physical location of each piece of information first of all i have two sheets in front of me so which sheet is this information on i have the depth of the two sides the two stacks of paper the right and the left side of this notebook which would be the same in a book and each sheet has eight corners, so I can think to myself, oh, was it closer to this corner, this corner, or was it in the middle? So you have physical landmarks to tell you where it is. E-text, depending on your font size and whatnot, changes. You know, they try to do page numbers, but again, those change based on font size. Although, wonderful thing, and I've thought about this, I, I know somebody's in their 80s and uh, losing her eyesight. It, what I can't do with paper is make it bigger. Yes, I know there are large print books. I know there's magnifying devices. But on a Kindle or an iPad, I can make the text huge if I need to. So, you know, when I get old, maybe I will be losing my eyesight. I'll probably have to quit doing fountain pen reviews then. I'd still like to be able to read. So a Kindle is a way I'd be able to do that. By the way, we're headed east on Highway 94, or Interstate 94 again. The state is going to change a lot now that we're on this side of the Missouri River. It's a lot flatter. We're going to soon go through prairie pothole country. We're not quite in it yet. We're kind of in the flat area before that. One of these days, i got to drag you down to my classroom and show you a 3D printed map of North Dakota so you get a perspective of what's going on here. Now, uh, on that topic of e-reading, a lot of people actually think they read better on screen, which would be poll data, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Now it was time to switch soaker hoses. Uh, tomorrow is going to be super hot, so I thought I would water those two beds today, and then tomorrow I'm going to get up really early, turn on the drip tape to my garden, make sure everything's got a nice big drink of water before the main blast of heat hits in the afternoon. Okay, 
So I think I was saying we re we think we read better on screen, but re the reality is we only read faster. Now, one of the articles I read was the case against e-readers. And they cited some of the things that I agree with about e-readers that are awesome. When you're traveling, an e-reader is portable, compact, you've got lots of sources, and you know, reality is e-books are slightly cheaper. Now, problem with ebooks, they're not environmentally friendly. And I know I hold up that little Kindle, which no longer works, and hold it up next to all the books in my house, which it could hold. And you think, really? Look how much material is in those books. Well, these materials are made out of dead trees. Trees can be regrown. Uh, yes, there's some ink in them and so on. But, you know, if... Uh, God forbid anybody ever needs to dispose of their books. Books are biodegradable. That Kindle is not. So I'm not even sure how I'm going to get rid of it. I'm hoping, well, if I buy another Kindle, I guess Amazon does have a trade-in, but I won't get any money for it because it's too old and it doesn't work. Uh, but the materials they use, not environmentally friendly. There's some rare earth minerals in there and things. Uh, the infrastructure that supports an ebook, the servers and so on, Definitely not environmentally friendly, using a lot of energy. Um, and with a book, you can see how much you're reading, you can annotate. I mean, if I'm, especially if I'm working on a project, you'll find little post-its sticking out of my books. Uh, and it's just easier to concentrate when you're reading on a book. Um, but the, what we are finding is that ebooks are a little bit less popular now. Uh, 2007, and you know, Amazon is a little cagey about releasing details, but a study in 2017 showed ebook sales are down 17%. I'm sorry if I'm over focusing on Amazon's Kindle and not bringing up the Barnes and Noble Nook or any of the other e readers, but sounds like the Barnes and Noble Nook is on the way out, and the uh, Kindle is dominant in the marketplace, so that's why I'm focusing on it. But anyway, ebook sales are down 17%. Real book sales are up 8%. Uh, now, one of the things I didn't like when I read that was part of the reason they're up is people are starting to see books more as decor. I'll admit I haven't read every book on my shelf. I plan to. I, uh, I've always been that way. I buy more books than I read. I, I get to them eventually. But uh, they're not decoration. A lot of them are references and so on. Or books I want to reread at some point. I, and yes, I will admit I put some thought into how my books are arranged. It has more to do with the height of the bookshelves than how pretty the books are. You know, it's just the way it is. Uh, good luck to whoever tries to find a book in my library because it is... Only the fiction is organized, and even that's not perfect. Um, there actually was, I was reading about one guy that reads the book electronically, and then he buys the physical copy like a trophy. I guess the author doesn't care, buying books. Uh, another interesting thing is that digital audio is up 28%. Now, what I was doing while I was driving the car here is actually listening to The Economist, which was on my iPad, through my car speakers. I, uh, it has a tape deck, so I can hook it to the headphone jack. Yes, tape deck. It's an 18-year-old car. It's the way it is. Um, and sometimes the e-books are being used as marketing for the real book. Now, some books aren't as good as others. Like children's books often are not as good on a screen as they are on paper. Uh, some of you might recall John Oliver came out with a book kind of poking fun at Mike Pence, our current vice president. It was about Marlon Bundo, which is Mike Pence's pet rabbit. Only in John Oliver's version, it was a little bit different sort of a story. 
Uh, Mike Pence's wife and daughter had written a children's book about Marlon Bundo, too, that came out like a day or two after John Oliver's. So John Oliver was just being mean. But anyway, I purchased a copy because I appreciated the cause. But the reason I'm bringing that up is I hated reading that thing on the screen. It was miserable. So uh, I ended up buying a paper copy when they came back in stock. And much easier to read in paper. Sorry. Uh, graphic novels are another one. I did buy some of the Walking Dead no uh, graphic novels just to find out how it compared. I find graphic novels very hard to read. They're kind of that, oh, I kind of don't want to do anything right now and I don't have an attention span type reading. But uh, anyway, I bought uh, Walking Dead in book form. They take up a lot of space. You know, those pictures. Ugh. Especially there's hardly any story to it. Oop, did I say that out loud? Anyway, um, they take up a lot of space. So I have tried buying a few with my Kindle, or sorry, with my iPad. If they're programmed correctly, you can zoom in on particular panes, or they'll go with like this half of the pane, then this half of the pane. But it's... Uh, not as nice to read, and you don't get the full effect of the full page and see how the panes relate to each other. So I don't really like that online either, even though it takes up a lot less space. So uh, that brings me to the question that really led me on this path. I was wondering about iPad versus Kindle. Well, right away, you put your Kindle up next to an iPhone or an iPad and I don't care if you have the newest Kindle it just looks old-fashioned oh the screen is gray it's black and white there's no color although there are experiments being done with color e-ink but it's going to be different it's not going to be glowing it's going to be reflected although butterflies and flowers are reflected light and they're pretty so there's that I didn't find a lot of conclusive research but I did find, you know, for whom is each one better? So when you're reading your, if, if you're, the Kindle is a single use device. Uh, it, it's really good if you're a heavy reader. It holds its charge for a long, 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 long time. Uh, because it doesn't glow, it just uses reflected light, which is what your eye has evolved to look at. You don't get the eye strain. It's like reading paper. And it's awesome outside. Even in bright light, you can still read the screen. Uh, a tablet is better for things like textbooks or comments. Or comics, sorry. Although I just told you my feeling on comics. I guess graphic novels, but same thing. And they're terrible outside. Because you can't read the light. It's not bright enough in that bright sunlight. So I suppose in that respect, Advantage Kindle. I just didn't find anything about readability. I know I read one study once long ago that the fonts on a Kindle and an iPad are designed to be very easy to read. And because you don't strain as much to read them, you process less. I've heard the same thing about reading cursive writing rather than uh, printed writing. Um... But I also know, you know I, I have a number of pen pals. Some of them, it's like, I don't really even know what you're saying here. Because <laughs> I can't read your words. And so I ignore those paragraphs. Now let's turn Orwellian for a minute. Literally and figuratively. A couple of years ago, and I didn't write down what year... But Animal Farm in 1984, which are two novels by George Orwell about totalitarian societies, were released for Kindle on the Amazon store by a company that didn't actually have the rights to those books. But of course, they were purchased. And so what Amazon did to correct the situation is they removed them from these people's devices and refunded the customers their money. Now, pause a moment. You just try that with my house. You try coming in here and saying, oh yeah, you shouldn't have bought Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion. You just try it. You can't. 
I mean, I guess you could, but, you know, Amazon isn't going to do that. I guess if we ever get thought police or something, they could start doing that. But electronically, it is so easy. And they did it. Now, in fairness to Amazon, they have reevaluated their policies, although they were a little vague in the article I was reading about how they're handling that. But I guess they did realize that, oh, yeah, that was a big, 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 big mistake. But I want to tell you a story about a specific person who was affected by this. This is a 17-year-old high school student in Detroit, Justin Gavronsky. Uh, he was using 1984 in his English class, this illegal 1984. He did all of his annotations and uh, notes on the Kindle. And my understanding is he had one of the ones with the keyboard, like what I have, that doesn't work. So I can't even imagine doing that, because, ugh. But he did it. I guess kids are more comfortable typing on those itty-bitty keyboards than I am. And then when uh, Amazon removed all copies of 1984 and Amazon, or I'm sorry, and uh, Animal Farm, boop, there went all of his work. His whole English project, gone in a flash. I didn't really read how that turned out. I'm hoping, if you know, if I was his teacher, I think I'd... At first, I'd be like, seriously, dude? But I'd like to think I'd give him an extension. So I don't know how his teacher handled it. But let's wrap this up. We've been in the car for almost 45 minutes <laughs> talking about Kindles and iPads. Um, for me, I like it when I travel. That's what I brought with me is my iPad. I didn't bring any books with me. Uh, I like it because it cleans out shelf space. I would actually like to get rid of some of the bookshelves in my house. I just don't want to get rid of the books on them. Um, I love them for magazines. In fact, I don't subscribe to paper magazines. There are two different ones I want to subscribe to, but they have, they're paper only. So I'm just like, nope, because then I have to recycle them. And it's hard, as you saw. Now, they're not as good for references or textbooks. And personally, I prefer novels in paper, but I don't mind them on a screen because it's easily portable, and that's often what you want to read when you're traveling anyway. So the reality is, the future of reading is not going to be either or. These people that talk about paperless schools or paperless offices have been proven wrong by history, and they'll be proven wrong again. It's going to be a mix. And I've been wondering about this a lot, as my school is going to one-to-one -one devices next year. Every student's going to have a device. And I'm wondering, you know, how do I find that mix? And I think it's going to take a few years of trial and error, and I'm going to make mistakes. But I think it's a conversation worth having, and I think... Doing this research for this video is going to benefit me personally. I know the note-taking stuff did because I've been investigating OneNote a lot more and you know, how can I handwrite notes and get students to handwrite notes and so on. Um, but yeah, we have to get comfortable with the reality that our future is not paper or screen only. So I thank you for coming along for the ride. I'm not 100% sure what the next video will be, but uh, I think it's going to be about the upcoming teacher shortage, which some states are already experiencing. So we'll see. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.